it's been a two-year process, and the initial evaluation was to examine his ability to generate any motor activity in his legs, which um, he wasn't able to do in the beginning. And then we trained him for essentially a year with intense activity-based therapy, locomotor training, and looked for any improvements in his motor activity, either with voluntary movements or in stepping or in standing. And in essence, the locomotor training had a minimal effect at all. Um, and so at that point, uh, what we did was we implanted an um, epidural stimulator and an electrode array uh, with the intent of accessing uh, special circuitry in the spinal cord um, and, in essence, activate it. Um, then, in combination with intense training, try to functionally reorganize the nervous system with the help of the epidural stimulation uh, to generate uh, improved function. We did an intense series of experiments to map um, uh, the circuitry, uh, and um, in the course of that, we were able to get um, the legs to move in flexion extension patterns like walking within the very first week, and that was very unexpected. And in addition, um, within that week, with support of the body weight support, we were able to get him to stand without any help at the legs. So he was generating enough force to bear his body weight, and we lowered the body weight support all the way to zero. And, it, and, and so the nervous system was able to generate enough um, commands to the muscles to have them contract sufficiently so he could stand. And we're in the very, very early stages of really understanding the best way to activate the circuitry. Uh, what's important, uh, the, the most important finding right now is that we can access the circuitry. Um, we have an initial understanding of how it works. So we have some ability to, um, to facilitate the output we want, but it's, it's really in its earliest stages. Uh, one of the things that is often misunderstood is that the stimulation generates these specific different types of patterns. And the stimulation doesn't. It just um, excites the circuitry. And what really drives the functional change is the retraining. And so that actually turns out to be uh, a big advantage when you think about making it useful for people because you can use your own um, cues, your own body's cues, to direct what the spinal cord does. You don't have to come up with very detailed, sophisticated um, stimulation paradigms. Um, you just use that in, in, to uh, get the circuitry in a situation where it can interpret the information about uh, whether the, leg, the sensory information, whether the leg is straight or bent, whether you're supposed to be walking or standing. Mm -hmm. um, so those principles and those approaches can be used regardless of what the neurologic insult is, mm -hmm. as long as that circuitry has not been injured. Okay. That helps. We started observing physiological changes um, in essence, not independent of, of standing and walking, but um, most likely uh, a consequence of it. And things affected his circulation, his ability to tolerate temperature changes, uh, his overall sense of well-being, his muscle size uh, dramatically increased. It's a very exciting time for not only uh, for moving these findings forward and the technology forward, but for lots of opportunities to address paralysis and not only in spinal cord injury, but any other neurologic disorder. Extension of the link of flexion, so it's like flexion, flexion, and stuff. Right, and, but you know, also Five. once you get that flexion, then you, you know. Yeah. When you just said coming off, mm -hmm. you come off there, Mike? No. Independent.
Back on. Independent. Back on. Ten hertz. Stay here for a minute. One aspect has been training so that the spinal cord can learn, uh, so that we can enhance the output of the spinal cord. Yes. And so the animal experiments have taught us a lot about how to approach that. And the third uh, thing that we are, are, are combining is the epidural stimulation, which is probably the, the newest aspect even though this, it's been demonstrated with epidural stimulation, you could induce the locomotor-like movements for, for a number of years. And there's reasonable evidence to suggest that what the brain does when we want to walk is the brain just gives a general instruction to the spinal cord to walk. It lets the spinal cord take care of all the details. So if those details are built into the circuitry of the spinal cord, then uh, we need to provide a signal to tell the spinal cord to walk yes. and then allow the sensory system from the periphery, from the legs, to tell the spinal cord what to do, how, how to carry out the details. The epidural stimulation is enabling the spinal cord. It's getting it ready to step.